Okay, I'll give you another moral dilemma, one that's a, much more a real world dilemma than the trolley problem. And one that I find especially hard, but it's actually related um, to the one we just talked about. It relates to collateral damage. So, in, in warfare, I, I, in discussing the last dilemma, I suggested that an important distinction was between cases where you intend harm to somebody as a means to your goal, and cases where your action cause har causes harms to, to them, but it's not part of your plan that they be harmed, it's a side effect. It's an unintended consequence or a side effect of what you're doing. And the idea is that that's less, it's less morally objectionable to cause harm to somebody as an unintended um, consequence of your action than to have har harm to them as part of your plan, something that you aim at and something that you want and need to happen. And that's a very important distinction in the general morality of war, because in, in the general morality of war says, but there's an important distinction between military targets and civilian targets, or between military personnel and civilian personnel. And you're not permitted, it's a war crime, to target civilians or to target non-combatants. You can't intend harm to civilians as your goal or as a means to your goal, as you would do if you bombed civilian neighborhoods of a big city. But it's not that you're forbidden ever to do what will cause harm to civilians. You're permitted to to, to do that if you're aiming at a legitimate military target and the harm to civilians is incidental or collateral or foreseen but not intended. So if there's a, a an arms factory, a place that makes bombs or tanks or fighter planes, and it happens to be in a civilian neighborhood where there are people living nearby, and you can't bomb the military target without harming some civilians living nearby, that's not necessarily forbidden. But there's another part of it which says that you can't, you know, you can't just cause any collateral damage that you want. It's not as if, you know, one of my examples is, let's say I wanted to see the site of a mushroom cloud behind the CN Tower. It doesn't mean that it's okay for me to go over to Toronto Island, drop a hydrogen bomb um, in the middle of Toronto uh, so I can watch the mushroom cloud and then say, well, but I didn't intend the deaths of the people in the city. They were just a foreseen consequence of my wanting to see a mushroom cloud behind the CN Tower. There's a limit of proportionality, which means that though it's, you're not absolutely forbidden to cause harm to civilians um, as an unintended consequence or as, as a collateral side effect of what you do, the harm to civilians mustn't be out of proportion to your legitimate objectives, let's say, in attacking um, the military target. So if I bomb the munitions factory and civilians are killed, the harm to civilians can't be disproportionate to the importance of the factory. So if it's a really trivial factory, it's doing nothing very important for the enemy's war effort, and if I drop a bomb on it, I'm going to kill a million civilians, that would be disproportionate. Sort of in recent military conflicts, a lot of the debate has been about whether certain actions are proportionate or disproportionate. So just to take some examples, when Israel has defended itself against rocket attacks from South Lebanon um, by Hezbollah or from the Gaza Strip by Hamas, it has responded militarily and considerable numbers of civilians have been killed. And the question has been, um, were the um, Israeli actions disproportionate? Even if they weren't aiming to, to at civilians, is the extent of harm to civilians out of proportion to the legitimate military importance of what they were doing. And finally getting to the dilemma, and actually it relates very much to those, those cases of Israeli action in South Lebanon and Gaza. Let's say there's a military target um, that the enemy has, and what the enemy does is purposely place civilians in the neighborhood of the military target. So it's got a rocket launcher that it wants to use to launch rockets into Israel, and it goes and places its launcher in the middle of you know, the town square of a town full of civilians. It could have put it out in the desert where nobody was around, but it intentionally puts it, it where there are civilians in the hope that that will stop um, the enemy, in this case Israel, from targeting it. So let's say um, we're trying to respond to the rocket launcher and stop it from sending rockets at our civilians. If we send, if we attack it, if we attempt to bomb it, we will kill civilians. But the civilians are only there because the enemy wrongfully 
place the civilians near the military target. And that's, by the way, something that's also forbidden by military ethics and military law. It's a war crime to intentionally place military targets um, where civilians are or to move civilians to where a military target is. That's to use them as involuntary shields. And here's the dilemma. Let's say we're deciding whether our attack on the rocket launcher would be disproportionate or not. And we know that it will kill a certain number of civilians. Um, but the civilians are only there because they were wrongfully placed there by the enemy. In assessing our bombing act for proportionality, do we take ourselves to be fully responsible for the deaths of the civilians? Or do we say the responsibility is not completely ours, it belongs instead wholly or in part to the enemy who placed the civilians um, near the military target? A very tough line would, be, would say it's not our responsibility at all. Um, they, the civilians would not be in any danger had the enemy act, not acted wrongly. And therefore, the responsibility for the civilian deaths belongs totally to the enemy who, placed, who wrongfully placed them near the military target. The other extreme would say, doesn't matter how the civilians got there. If we bomb the rocket launcher, we're going to ourselves cause the deaths of civilians. And a number of civilians, which is disproportionate in comparison with the importance of that rocket launcher, and to cause those civilian deaths would be wrong. There's the question. If we're going to perform an action, it's going to cause civilian deaths, but it's only going to cause civilian deaths because the enemy wrongfully placed the civilians where they are. If the civilians die, how much is that our responsibility? How much is that the enemy's responsibility? In deciding whether the attack would be proportionate or disproportionate, do we count the civilians' deaths fully against you know, the benefit of hitting the military target, or are they discounted, perhaps even down to zero, because they're partly or wholly the enemy's responsibility. Now, this is a subject on which there are huge disagreements. Israel takes the tough line that the responsibility is the enemies for placing the civilians near the military target, it's not Israel's. I think many critics of Israel take the opposite view. That no, what doesn't matter how the civilians got there, once they're there, it's your responsibility not to cause disproportionate harm to them. And you know, there's a lot of heated debate that goes back and forth about that. I've tried to think about it and write about it, and I just find it very difficult to come to any sort of sound reasoned decision about that. It's an important question. It arises any time there are actions in response um, to terrorist groups, because they typically hide themselves in a civilian population. They surround themselves with civilians. Um, there are a lot of actions like that in the world today. You know, there's the, there's the war on terror. Um, the issue comes up repeatedly. Uh, it's very difficult. That's a dilemma um, that I can't solve and that nobody's solved to the satisfaction of everybody. So there's no defined amount of disproportionality, like if you can kill a hundred civilians for this bomb facility, it's okay, but if you kill a thousand, then it's not okay. It's all debated, usually? Yeah, there's no... You know, there's, there's no rule book that says, you know, one rocket launcher justifies 52.3 civilians. International law just says uh, that the, the, the harm to civilians must not be excessive in comparison with the, the direct and concrete military advantage expected. So it must not be excessive, and you have to use interpretation to decide what counts as excessive. But I was asking about a question, not so much about the numbers. And let's say we knew that for a rocket launcher, it would be permissible to kill five civilians, but not more than five civilians. And that would be true if the civilians were there by accident. My question was, what if there are 10 civilians there, but they're only there because the enemy wrongfully placed them there, intending to use them as shields? One view would say, well, if the ten are there because the enemy placed them there, it's as if there were no civilians. It's not our responsibility at all. The other extreme would be it doesn't matter how they got there. There are ten civilians, and if you attack the rock rocket launcher, you're going to kill ten civilians. Ten is more than five. The action is not permissible. And the intermediate, the in-between view would say, well, if they were wrongfully placed there by the enemy, then that reduces, that, that means that some of the responsibility for their deaths belongs to the enemy, and that reduces their significance in, in your assessment of proportionality. And so the argument might be, well, if there are 10 there wrongfully placed there by the enemy, that 
not as bad as if there were 10 there innocently. It's not as if there were none there innocently. It's kind of like as if there were five there innocently. So 10 gets reduced in importance to 5, but not all the way to 0. That's the intermediate.